Hey guys, it's Alex. Welcome to part two of how much does a house cost in Victoria, BC. Today we're talking about the West Shore, more specifically detached housing in the West Shore. And fittingly, I'm standing on a giant pile of dirt on the top of Bear Mountain with excavators and dump trucks all around me where all this new exciting development is going on. And from my vantage point up here, we've got beautiful views east toward downtown Victoria as well as south over the city of Langford, the Chosen and those beautiful Olympic Mountains. I'll take you through all the communities of West Shore, so Colwood, Machosan, Langford, Highlands, and Souk, and how much it costs to buy a house there. So we're going to use a similar format to what we used last week when covering the core neighborhoods of Victoria. If you hadn't watched that video, I will place another link up here. That's a great place to start when getting yourself acquainted with Victoria because those historically have been the more expensive neighborhoods within a 20 minute drive of downtown Victoria. As we head further west into the West Shore, highlighted here in yellow, historically these have been the more affordable neighborhoods, but a lot of these um, communities over the course of the last couple of years have seen close to 100% price appreciation on an average sale price basis. So pretty astonishing to see the kind of growth that we've seen. And still, I feel there is a lot of room for a lot of these communities to grow, especially given their proximity to um, some of those beautiful scenery on our west coast um, from Colwood, Machosan, and Souk. So with that said, let's jump into it and start talking about that community way out on the west end of town and uh, Souk, as we define it on our board, actually runs all the way out west past Port Renfrew. Some of you that are familiar with uh, our beautiful island will see that you know towns like Euclid and Tofino are a little bit further up this coast. We're a little bit more sheltered here in Souk, but it's worth noting that places like Jordan River and Port Renfrew are fantastic places to surf. So in Souk itself, we've got some really great neighborhoods. Um, we're going to start on the east end of it, I believe with five communities over here. So Cicinos in blue, 17 Mile in green, East Souk in blue, Silver Spring pink, and Petter Bay in yellow. More rural properties, usually a combination of well and septic, driving distance only from amenities, but a very peaceful um, country setting with some of the most incredible parks like East Souk Regional Park, just a stone's throw away. Those five communities average 1179 in 2022, median 1050. Now, I've sort of lumped all of the core neighborhoods of Souk all into one because pricing and property types have been reasonably homogenous. There's a lot of development going on, especially at sort of to the northwest of Souk at the moment with some astonishing views of the Souk Basin. But for the time being, I have grouped these all together. So I'll list them in the video, but basically it all boils down to the fact that the average is just over a million, a million 29, and median is 952. So on the whole, when comparing Souk with the core neighborhoods of Victoria, generally speaking, it is still more affordable. Now, one of the downsides of Souk, especially if you work in Victoria, is that it is two lanes in and two lanes out, and this can get backlogged, especially um, on turnaround times for the business day. So one thing to bear in mind, on a calmer day, I'd say it's about a 40 minute drive to downtown Victoria from Souk. Now heading a little bit further west, we get into West Coast Road, uh, Shirley or Sheringham Point, French Beach, Jordan River, and this giant area in green, Port Renfrew, and Carmana beyond it, where Carmana Walburn Provincial Park is. Not a lot of properties transacted out here, in fact, almost zero, um, but Port Renfrew is a growing community out here and a great little surf town, um, as is Jordan River and Shirley. Current operation, there's some beautiful seaside homes here, which is why we've seen prices trend the way they have thus far, um, as well as some massive acreage on the north side of West Coast Road. Average in 2022, 1388, and median, 1225. Machosan. Machosan is a beautiful rural community, lots of beautiful farmland and seaside property, a very quaint little town center in Machosan as well. Historically very anti-development, which is why prices have pushed the way they have in Machosan. We're gonna start out with Rocky Point, Kangaroo, Neald, Machosan, and Olympic View. So these inland communities all through this section, yellow, pink, 
This is Neeld here, Kangaroo in turquoise, and Rocky Point in blue. Those five inland communities, again, lots of farm type properties, rural properties, and uh, acreage nestled in the forest here between Neeld and Kangaroo. On average this year, 1480, and the median, 1502. The seaside sections of Machosan, Albert Head, William Head, and Petter Bay. On average this year, so here we go, Albert Head, William Head, and Petter Bay. If you watch my beaches video, which again, I will link up here if you're interested in learning about the best beaches in Victoria, BC, William Head is where um, the lovely Whitty's Lagoon Beach and Park are located. So make sure you do pop out and visit this. It's a lovely day trip to head out to Machosan, pop into the Machosan Cafe or um, Bilston Farm and try some of their fine lavender products. Those three communities, 2332 on average and 1757 as a median. Now, again, not an area that historically has a lot of transactions. In fact, there's only been four this year. Now we're gonna jump into Colwood. In some ways, Colwood and Langford are kind of one, but on a municipal level, they do um, split and do have different governing bodies. Colwood is a beautiful part of our Southern Island, um, just on the Western end of Esquimalt Harbor. As you can see over here is Esquimalt which is again where our naval base is set. And the reason it is, is because these are beautiful calm waters, very sheltered from the Pacific. And uh, early on when James Douglas was tasked with the place of finding a, finding a place to establish a fort here, um, he chose this part of downtown Victoria because again, out here to the west and to the east, created this beautiful harbor that was sheltered from prevailing winds and uh, big waves and whatnot. Now, Colwood itself um, is a lovely, um, historically significant part of Victoria. Hatley Castle, of course, was designed by Samuel McClure and Fort Rod Hill, um, again, is a national historic site with the beautiful Fiskard Lighthouse um, at its terminus. Um, so talking about Colwood, we're gonna start with Latoria Olympic View and Royal Bay, so down here to the south. Lots and lots and lots of new development, especially if you drive through Royal Bay. This is basically a community that's um, been created in the last five years. Um, prior to that, it was really just a sand pit, and there's a lovely beach here, Royal Bay Beach, down below. Those three communities, 1520 on average, and 1475 as a median. Wishart, north and south, and the Triangle Mountain area, so blue, green, and gray. Older homes primarily through these three communities. Um, lots of development happened here in the 70s and is pretty easily identifiable if you drive through any of these neighborhoods, great family areas through these three communities and uh, mostly off the beaten track where just residents are traveling these streets. So 1183 on average and 1150 as a median. The Lagoon and Royal Roads neighborhoods. Royal Roads really does not have hardly any residential development, but there is a little bit um, just off of the Colwood Strip. The Lagoon neighborhood in blue, this is the Esquimalt Lagoon. This is a great beach, again, referencing that beach video, top eight beaches where um, Esquimalt Lagoon was mentioned. But this residential neighborhood just at the southern end of it is a really beautiful seaside community and a lot of these homes have nice sea views. Those two communities, 1172 on average and 1160 as a median. Sunridge, Hatley Park, Colwood Lake and Colwood Corners. So these four communities just on the um, Langford side of Colwood. Um, again, generally speaking, these are older homes, a lot of development in the 60s, 70s and 80s through these four communities. Um, a lot of these homes have been renovated to a very high standard currently and are around some of uh, Colwood's best attractions like Royal Roads University and the Royal Colwood Golf Club. Those four communities, 1057 as an average and 1050 as a median. The District of Highlands, incorporated in the 90s. There are a lot of historic homes here that predate the official formation of the District of Highlands. Lots of beautiful rural properties, um, incredible parks here, Gallon Todd and Mount Work. 
Um, there's amazing places to hike. Still, in a lot of cases, untouched piece of southern Vancouver Island. Um, a lot of really significant large parcels through the highlands. And if you're looking for um, peace and tranquility, still just 40 minutes to downtown Victoria, the highlands is absolutely your ticket. Now these few communities, again, because there's not a lot of sales transacting, historically are higher price points because they're larger parcel sizes or uh, more significant custom built properties. 1864 as an average and 1975 as a median. Last but certainly not least, City of Langford, incorporated in 1992. Um, when I was growing up in Victoria, Langford was kind of the sticks and that narrative certainly has changed as this city has developed at a breakneck pace over the last decade or so. Starting with Humpback and Goldstream, so these, prop, uh, these communities to the west of Langford, blue and pink. Um, not a lot of properties through Humpback. There is some more acreage through here. There's a really nice little uh, community just off the highway in the Goldstream neighborhood, a lovely subdivision that is just beside uh, Goldstream Park, which is a great place to hike and camp in the summer months. Those two communities, 1167 and 1209. Luxton, Happy Valley, Olympic View, and Walfred. So Luxton in yellow, Happy Valley in green, Olympic View just by the Olympic View Golf Club in blue, and Walfred in turquoise. Those four communities, tons and tons and tons of new subdivision. There are lots of um, large parcels along Happy Valley Road that have been subdivided and um, lots of brand new infill housing has come in along this section, as well as through Luxton, parts of Walfred, and uh, potentially larger homes in the Olympic View neighborhood. But all the same, lots and lots of new development, new and exciting things happening through this section at the southern end of Langford. 1203 as an average, and 1.2 as a median. Glen Lake, Jacklin, and Langford proper. Glen Lake, here in gray, Jacqueline in blue, turquoise I should say, and Langford proper in gray. So these are the, really the central communities of Langford. Um, if you drive down the Veterans Memorial Parkway, you'll see all of the shops and stores that line the west side of it that runs basically through all of these communities. Um, there are some lovely lakefront properties around Glen Lake, um, but these really are the central corridors of Langford. Those three combined for an average of 1052 and a median 999. West Hills and Langford Lake, a lot of new development coming to these two neighborhoods. Um, of course, there's beautiful viewpoints all around Langford Lake, um, especially on this north end of it. And then all the way through West Hills, basically the, the development that's occurred over the last 10 years has created tons and tons of housing especially for families with great access to downtown Langford, as well as some recently emerging amenities like the Geordie Lund Bike Park and places for outdoor recreation. So those two communities combined this year for 1150 as an average and 1175 as a median. Mill Hill, Fairway, and Atkins. So Mill Hill here in um, blue, Atkins in pink, and Fairway, fittingly, just across the street from the Royal Colwood Golf Club, is in blue. Those three communities just on the west side of Mill Hill and Mill Hill Regional Park. Um, again, lots of great view properties up in these neighborhoods. Um, primarily newer homes, but there is quite a mixture through these three. Average 1191 and median 1150. Crossing the highway, uh, into the Florence Lake and Thetis Heights neighborhoods. Thetis Heights, fittingly, is just on the west end of Thetis Lake Regional Park. There are some access points from these neighborhoods that give you great um, connectivity to all the trails that surround Thetis Lake and all the recreation that goes along with it. And Florence Lake, again, fittingly, just around Florence Lake is very, very close to all the amenities that are lining the Mill Stream Road. These two communities, very amenity heavy, lots of new homes, and a nice mixture of family streets and uh, new development condos and townhomes. 
these two communities, 1156 on average and 1125 as a median. Last but not least, Bear Mountain. Bear Mountain, of course, was developed in the um, early to mid 2000s as a resort community, which it still is. And over the last few years, there has been a lot of newer development, which is bringing um, some really exciting stuff to the peak of Bear Mountain, where you have a Nicholas designed golf course um, and still is uh, what feels like a resort like community, beautifully manicured up there, um, which fits with the golf course aesthetic and a great place for lots of people to visit, um, whether it's uh, just in the summer months or living year round. 1713 as an average and 1654 as a median. That is the West Shore in Victoria, BC. If I'm talking about pros and cons, I think pros are tons of upside and potential, tons of new development and activity going on in the West Shore. Um, it is the most rapidly developing community in Western Canada or one of them for good reason. And there's lots of things to get excited about. If you work in downtown Victoria, be cognizant of the kinds of hours you're working because you can get caught in some traffic as the growth and development has intensified. Um, the highways and arterials haven't necessarily improved um, at the same kind of rate or frequency. So commute is one thing uh, on a good day. You can be into town in 20 minutes and on a bad day, if you don't time it quite right, you could be looking at more than an hour. So um, be aware of that. In our next video, we'll be talking about the peninsula. So everything north of Saanich all the way up to Sydney and North Saanich. And I'll be sharing a few of my thoughts on those neighborhoods, communities, and their price points. So follow along, subscribe for more, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.